You're watching Influence Me Wednesday with Morale All Things Hair. Hello, my name is Morello Kane, Morale All Things Hair Media, and it's the hair debate, our segment of What's Up Doc? We are yes. here with Dr. Nikki. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Nikki, how are you? I'm doing lovely. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing absolutely beautiful. And when I tell you this topic, I'm truly excited about it. And I tell you, you must, must, must go and share um, this topic because for the month of April, okay, it's the awareness of diabetes, stress, as well as alcoholism. And so these are three conditions that affect the hair loss. And so we are talking about these three conditions today, Dr. Nikki. Thank you so much um, for bringing your expertise. And can you um, just share your expertise with our viewers? You know, you are a co-host, you know, um, with this segment. But now for some of you that may not have been introduced to Dr. Nikki prior to, if you could share your experience, please. Absolutely. So I'm the owner of Soka Center, Skin Culture and Hair Center, which is a full service dermatology practice that really specializes in hair loss disorders. So we really try to help understand and learn about the hair journeys of each individual, in addition to also understanding like what's going on, getting an accurate diagnosis, which is so important early on. And then we can find a very specified or specific treatment plan for that individual and their hair loss concerns. So that's a little bit about um, some of my specialty and my passion in regarding to, you know, helping individuals understand their hair loss conditions and get a, get on an accurate treatment plan. But I'm, I'm actually very excited as well um, to talk about these things because I think a lot of times we kind of um, forget that hair and scalp are still part of the skin Absolutely. system. Um, and we, we kind of tend to neglect it a little bit, yes. but it all plays a huge role. A lot of times your hair, nails, and skin can be really clues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they can manifest things that Absolutely. may be going on internally in the body. And so it's really important to kind of pay attention to these things whenever that you do notice those changes. So I'm happy to talk about any of these, these concerns today and how alcoholism, diabetes, and stress can absolutely lead to changes in your hair. And Dr. Nikki, you truly stated something. Um, you know, as hair care providers, you know, um, consumers that come in, clients that come in, and so they say, okay, well, my hair is shedding, it's falling out. Um, they have patches of hair loss in their hair, and the first thing that they want to do is pick up a product, as though product always fixes the problem. And so today, in talking about these different conditions, um, hopefully you guys can see where um, the communication between your hair care provider as well as dermatologists is very, very much important. And so in talking about diabetes, Dr. Nikki, um, it's not so much that diabetes itself, once you initially diagnose, um, will, you know, pertain to hair loss, but it is the, um, the complications of unmanaged, you know, diabetes. And that's not taking your medications properly. You know, that's not adhering to the diet and how, you know, serious when it pertains to your diet, you know, is effective with hair loss. So anytime, we always say there's like equilibrium in the, in the body and we want the equilibrium to be in the right pH balance, um, sugar contents to be appropriately uh, well tolerated, maintained. And it's so important whenever there is a shift or change in dynamics, whether it's the pressures within the blood vessels, yes. the sugar content that's in the body, because um, sugar is actually pretty inflammatory. So I always yes. tell everyone that same sugar that can lead to diabetes or lead to heart attack and lead to scar tissue changes in the body is the same type of inflammation and sugar that can lead to scarring in the scalp and other yes. hair loss conditions. And so it's important whenever there is a shift in the body that you know is being adequately controlled. Um, unfortunately, I think a lot of people have seen what can happen when diabetes is not adequately controlled, just you know from infections to limbs being yes. um, affected or even just organs being affected. But I think we also forget that hair, nails, and skin can be affected from diabetes Absolutely. as well. Um, you know, along kind of connecting some of the other things we're going to talk about later, dehydration is a big thing that can happen with diabetes, which can affect the hair, nails, and skin. You know, dry hair is always brittle hair, so it will break very easily. 
Um, also with the fact that, you know, we talked about sugar being inflammatory. So if those sugars are being uncontrolled in diabetes, that most certainly can cause a shift in the dynamics of the, of the environment around the hair follicles, Absolutely. which can easily cause either inflammation to build there or potentially there to be a shift called a, a stress shed called a telogen effluvium that can occur. Absolutely, Dr. Nikki. And, and again, the you know, unmanaged complications of diabetes is what's very effective. You have to understand that it takes medication some time to accumulate through the body, in the body to be effective. Okay, but then understand too, that once you start that medication, um, reversing the effects, the negative effects that your body is undergoing on the inside that pertains to hair loss is gonna take some time. And so, you know, you wanna take the medication don't expect to see a turnaround when it pertains to hair loss, breakage, or shedding to accumulate or change within the next week. You know, it is definitely going to take some time because you have to understand that within the phases of hair growth, anything that affects one of those phases is going to affect and it has to pretty much kind of catch up at that point. Am I right, Dr. Nikki? Absolutely. So hair always kind of lags behind. Um, it's just based on the growth, rest, and shed phase of the hair. So usually if something does happen, even when someone gets into a shed phase, it's not because of what happened on day one of their, that they noticed the shedding. It's really yes. more so what happened two, three months prior to. Absolutely. So the same thing with the medicines. Um, you know, once the equilibrium in the body has been, re, you know, found once again or reestablished, yes. it's still going to take a little while for those hairs to kind of cycle through the rest phase and the shed phase that they probably got kicked into for them to calm down and for everything to stabilize again. So I always say you yes. want to be consistent yes. because you're consistently changing our environment. Ah, that's ex ex excellent, Dr. Nikki. So mm -hmm. another thing when it pertains to diabetes is the Salak disease. And when I tell you with the Salak disease, now that is more prone to the type one um, diabetes. And with that, alopecia does derive from that. And so now that's the importance that when you experience alopecia, seeking our specialist, mm -hmm. which is a dermatologist, is very much important. And so now, Dr. Nika, for alcoholism, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, something so very serious. You know, you kind of think of alcohol, well, you know, I could drink, have a drink a day. That It states that it's great for the heart. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about the abuse of that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you always say a little, little bit of something is good for the soul. You just don't want to, you know, overdo anything. Like even yes. water, if you take it too much, it can yeah. be detrimental to your health. So oh, wow. You always want to be kind of cautious of things. You know, red wine has some really positive um, cardiovascular, you know, health safety. Um, um, well, helps with cardiovascular safety. Yes. So you that's fine to have like a glass of red wine and not, you know, release the stress. <laughs> but it's really kind of the sugary um, drinks, the beers, the alcoholic beverages, and, and kind of consuming them, you know, more in moderation than potentially yes. one, one a night. Um, and even that sometimes can be a little too much depending on what's going on. But, you know, you always want to make sure that you're not having these high sugar and um, these particular high intake of alcohol. Yes because it, it can have effects on the body. And it, you know, we talked about equilibrium. Scalp and hair is fickle. Once that yes. equilibrium is shifted, um, you know, things happen very, very quickly and, and they can lag and lag behind even after everything's been, you know, back at, at a good baseline. But with alcoholism, you know, it affects the body in a lot of different ways. Um, it can cause a lot of dehydration. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the dry skin, hair and nails being, you know, dry hair is brittle hair yes. or fragile, fragile hair, excuse me. And then also talking about how it can affect um, the lining of the stomach. It can affect your absorption of nutrients that we talked about in our prior um, What's Up Doc uh, yes. episode. So, you know, tune into that one. <laughs> so we talk about nutrients and status of, of, the, of the body. But it can really affect your absorption rate, which leads to malnutrition. Um, particularly wow. protein can be affected and so that's when I always say when you go to sleep at night your body's going to restore and use protein to kind of repair cells whether mm -hmm. it's you know it goes in a totem pole of um, priority so you have your heart liver lungs kidney Absolutely. you know all your vital organs necessary for survival and at the bottom of that totem pole is going to be skin and then hairs and nails because um, wow. 
body realizes, okay, we can survive without hair or nails. Absolutely. Um, so you always want to make sure you have enough protein in your reservoir so that way you can kind of restore and repair everything necessary. Um, and so when that protein levels are being affected by malabsorption from alcoholism, mm -hmm. then that's when it also becomes an issue. Um, and then also, you know, it shifts the whole dynamic of the, the pH of the body. So mm -hmm. acidity levels, alkalinity levels, the body's working really hard to try to bring everything back to a good equilibrium. So it just yes. really kind of takes away the metabolic um, energy that you may need for other things to really focus on keeping that blood level at an appropriate pH for survival. Absolutely. And Dr. Nikki, um, you said some great facts there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, truly understand that your body is going to, you know, pretty much give to the hair, skin, and the nails mm -hmm. lats. You know, so again, you know, picking up a product to say, okay, how can I combat this? You know, the communication has to be very effective, you know, with your hair care provider. And so, now also too, now, and you did state something, you know, red wine is very good for the cardiovascular, you know, but now abusing, okay, when we're talking about alcoholism here, and so, you know, and speaking of, of those things, you know, um, understand that in the center of that is the heart, you know, and so the blood flow, the nutrients and the oxygen, how all of that affects. Now the cells that's in the hair, this is the outskirts of what you see here but it's being fed by the cells that's underneath, you know, the scalp. Mm -hmm. And so the nutrients and oxygen is very important for that, you know. And so again, just bringing up the, raising the awareness of what alcoholism can do to your body. And um, and so Dr. Nikki, I, I thank you for that. But now stress is on a whole different level <laughs> because I tell yeah. you, we all deal with that on a daily basis, <laughs> you know, traffic, you know, we're in Atlanta. And mm -hmm. so, you know, <laughs> so, so many different things, your job and whatnot can, you know, just introduce and bring stress about in your life, your yeah. family, the unbalance of that, you know. So, um, Dr. Nikki, mm -hmm. can you share some things on what, how stress can affect? when it pertains to hair loss. Yeah, stress and hair just don't mix well. And unfortunately, <laughs> it's even like the smallest stress. You think yes. you're cruising through the stressful event. I mean, it's life in general, right? Absolutely. Um, but unfortunately, scalp hair is like, you know, it checks out at the drop of a hat <laughs> sometimes. And so we really have to be mindful of what the stress levels are in our life. And if there's mm -hmm. any dynamic shifts and changes, I've had patients say that they notice their hair starts shedding and they're trying to re- you know, remember two, three months ago what happened, and Absolutely. they're like, well, nothing happened with the exception of me switching the filter of my shower head. You know, it can be something simple, um, as opposed to something, you know, obviously on the more mm -hmm. detrimental side that can cause a lot of stress shed. But the body does lag behind even once everything is kind of calmed down and you found your new equilibrium, even within that stressful situation, or once it's, you know, recovered from the stressful situation, um, or at least, you know, you've reincorporated back into a new form of normalization yes. it still lags behind so I always say you want to make sure that you know you kind of be mindful of what's going on in your life because your hair will let you know if oh, there is something that's happening definitely mm -hmm. <laughs> no absolutely that and so I tell you again you know um, you know, we initially want to say, okay, well, what is the hair care provider doing? Or maybe the dermatologist is, is not, you know, um, effectively giving me the right medication. But, you know, definitely understand that, um, you know, and when it pertains to stress, start speaking the positive things, you know. Um, speaking those things into existence, you know. Um, because, again, when you start stating that, oh, my hair, my hair is, is falling out, it's doing this, it's doing that, that is stress on his own yeah it can be a it can be a very upsetting downward spiral um because i actually suffered through that when i was in residency trying to do chiefs trying to you know study for boards trying to go to work every day and learn all this stuff <laughs> it's and you know it's life like i said but it's, my hair was like bye and it just started yes. shedding 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 and i lost almost 50 percent of my hair and wow you know that's when i realized okay i see how much Hair can affect the individual's self-esteem and yes, it who does. you are is how you present yourself as part of your personal brand is what I always say. It's not vanity, you know, it's, it's how you just want to be 
you know, how you want to present yourself. Absolutely. So that's when I realized also, okay, a lot of dermatologists don't really like treating hair loss disorders. Yes. Um, and I kind of had to go and find, seek out a dermatologist that specialized in hair loss disorders at that time. Mm -hmm to really have peace because sometimes when you don't understand what's going on and you're going from salon to salon or you're going Absolutely. using product after product and you're really not getting answers or things to keep continuing, it's really upsetting and frustrating. Absolutely. And um, you know, even though I was in dermatology and supposed to be learning a lot of the hair loss c just conditions, I wasn't learning yes. a lot of that. And that's when I actually started doing a lot of fellowships during my residency program with other dermatologists that specialize in hair loss disorders, which are a very few in the US. Yes. Um, and really just making sure that I had a good understanding and basis um, of that knowledge because I said, I wanna help prevent other individuals from experiencing that because that was that was pretty terrifying. No, absolutely, Dr. Mm -hmm. Nikki. And mm -hmm. I experienced something very similar that Dr. Nikki had to assist me through. And so again, I mean, when it pertains to the hair it is how we feel is how we present ourselves yeah. and so again that's the reason why you know we're on platforms to educate consumers you know because we are very much concerned in helping the individuals come back you know um, depression and their stress levels and be able to walk out and in, in confident you know and, and have a balanced and happy lifestyle and so Thank you so much for joining with us. And um, Dr. Nikki, where can they find you at? So if you're online, you can find us at Dr. Nikki Hill. You can also go to our website at socacenter.com. That's S-O-C-A-H-C-E-N-T-E-R.com. And of course, if you have any questions or want to be seen for hair loss disorders or know someone who is suffering from that, you can always give our office a call as well at 404-474-2301. And yes, yes, yes. My name is Morello Kane. Okay, the hair debate, you know, and Morello on things hair dot media. Okay, um, you can go and get a lot of information pertaining to what we're doing and connect them with us. And at the hair debate on Instagram and Facebook. And definitely, 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 you want to share again, share and connect with our YouTube at the hair debate. So again, it's the hair debate where we come to debate, debunk, and discover all things hair.